Hi, in this uh, uh, clip, I want to give you a quick overview of a case study of uh, eight elements of service excellence that I invented uh, at a turnaround that I was doing back in the early mid 80s, a company called Clark Security Products based in San Diego. I bought from Richard Clark in July of 1983. And I went out and identified the, the core customer niche and the, the five most profitable customers and the five important target accounts. And, and I boiled down the service value equation to these eight things. And I'm just providing this now because some people, for those listeners that are watching uh, these, these, these uh, clips in a sort of a linear fashion, they're probably already saying, well, you know, wait a minute, I, I, I want a story. I want some concrete, you know, illustrations. So, um, and again, if you go to exhibit three at my website, you can see a summary of these things and the benefits to both the company and to the customer. Uh, but the first thing was zero errors. So how many make mistakes do we make per thousand line items processed? Uh, obviously, doing it right the first time is cheaper than messing it up, and the customer gets a better service value experience than messing it up for the customer. Um, you can go to opensesame.com, module 4.5, and, and get the 10-minute detailed scoop on that. The second thing was we provide fill rates that's foundational uh, to what we do and so we're going to have a target level of fill rates by line items process you know because the customer doesn't think in terms of dollars is do you have it yes or no and if you don't i've got to go somewhere else so we want you to be able to say yes more than anybody else in the marketplace but we're going to tune our fill rates based on not just the popularity how often it's picked but the profitability, and we talked about this in earlier sections with line item profit analytics, we can powerfully rethink our fill rate strategy and, 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 and tactics. Uh, we can also, in that, that, that light, looking at most profitable vendors and most profitable items from those vendors, work with those vendors to increase the, the fill rates and the, the net profitability dramatically. So if you want more on how to uh, fill rate improvement, go to uh, Open Sesame modules 4.2, 4.4, 4.3. Um, a third thing is, is that if we want to have zero errors, if we want to have good customer satisfaction, it turns out you have to have good housekeeping. Um, so if somebody at Inside Sales uh, gets an order for four widgets and the computer says, oh, we have four. Like at Amazon.com, I go there and it says, hey, you know what, that book, that's great. We have two left. Well, they're saying they got two left. Uh, do they have two left? I mean, I don't know how good their housekeeping is. Well, actually, Amazon's is brilliant. So, but in most distribution environments, they go, wow, oh, four? You never know. I think I'm going to go out and do a stock check before I, I say we have it. Or we go ahead and enter the order, and then somebody comes in and says, you know, there's an order for 10. The computer says we have 15. We don't have any. We can't find them. And maybe they're out there. They're just put in the wrong place. So by counting not just any item, but my philosophy was we're going to count the super high pick items, the A-plus items, and we'll count a certain number a day. 20 was what, what I was doing in the old days. So let's count 20 A-plus items, and we'll cycle through the top 200 items over and over and over again in a 10-day period. And what we're trying to do is achieve 95% cycle count accuracy, which means we have to receive stuff perfectly, to put away perfectly, we've got to pick it perfectly, we've got to enter data in and out of the computer perfectly. And it's the A-plus items that get disturbed the most. Why count Ds? Nothing happens for the whole year and we just count them again at annual phys physical inventory time. Um, the, the fourth measurement was what I called a day's work and a day's time. This really had to do with same day receiving. Uh, the idea being that when stuff arrives at our dock to be received, it's A, A plus stuff because that's what we're buying. And if we can gang tackle and get it all received today and into the computer tomorrow morning, even when people are showing up at a counter at seven in the morning, our fill rates will be higher on the swing shift for filling the orders that are phoned in at the end of the day uh, because the stuff has been received. If we don't receive it, then what happens the next day is people say, well, you want A plus items. Uh, they're actually here, but they've not been received and put in the computer. But you know what? I'll, ha I'll work around this. I'll go ahead and do the order and I'll run out there and grab some of the stuff and make sure it gets in your order, etc. That upsets the processes and that upsets cycle count accuracy. And then when you're shipping stuff between branches, nobody just trust the other branch on close calls and everybody's doing stock checks and it becomes a mess. Um, 
The fifth thing is 100% on time. If you use UPS, it would be shipment. If you have your own trucks, it would be delivery. Uh, if you have will call counters, you'd say, all right, call us 15 minutes in advance. Then when you get here, we'll get you in and out in five minutes or less. Uh, that's a different, but that's, a, that's an on-time performance promise, if you will. So how do you do that? Take care of surges, you know, when there's also too many orders and not enough people. Uh, open Sesame Module 4.6. Now, the response times for on-time shipment will vary by niche. Some people say, I want to call today and place an order. And I'd like you to deliver it when I tell you to, which will be, you know, three days from now. Some people are saying, I am calling you because I know you have free delivery uh, every two weeks on a rural route on if you're big tractor trailer. So the second Friday of the month would be just fine. There are other people that, uh, you know, want to call in the morning, get in the afternoon, you know, that kind of thing. So it varies by the niche. And uh, that's important differentiation uh, to note. Uh, the sixth thing is immediate reconfirmation of all order details. So I'm taking an order and I say, well, let me repeat that back to you. You want these three items and these quantities and so ship to whatever. Now, sometimes the customer says, don't bother. I don't have time, whatever. So we do it as often as we can. Now, once you have a high performance service culture and everybody does this brilliantly, this, this may become uh, not as important. But as you're trying to create one uh, and you've got inexperienced people on the desk and so forth, th this is an important factor. Uh, the seventh one is we will guarantee that we will call back to a customer on any service deviation. So if they've placed an order and they're expecting to get it in a timely fashion and something, it's not going to happen. They ordered 10. We only have eight. We're not going to ship eight complete. We're not going to ship eight and ship two more from someplace else a day late. We're not going to substitute two items that are really the same vanilla as the first eight, but it's a different brand. We're going to call the customer back and say, you know, you, you ordered this. It turns out that we're not going to be able to deliver it on time. It turns out that we have a short, and this is what we could do about it, but we want you to okay that. Um, and then lastly, if there's a service deviation, a screw up, a mistake, we are going to do a heroic recovery. And there's a whole mathematical science to what that is and how you do it and how you do it with icing on top. And for more on that, you can go to uh, Open Sesame Modules 4.4. You can go to my website, merrifield.com, and read Article 3.5. In fact, that whole Section 3, Articles 1 through 12, are all about service management. Then now there are, will be additional extra service metrics that may be peculiar to different niches. So for example, if you're doing a lot of brokerage business, you know, it's gonna be drop ship. Some types of customers are very sensitive to how fast you can get a price and availability because they need that data to put into a bid they're doing themselves. The faster they get that bid out, the, the odds go up that they may actually win the bid just on speed. Um, if you've got an order in the pipeline and you need to monitor how it's going, if it's actually gonna be on time, and if it isn't, how do you get in touch with the customer to say, gee, you're probably not watching these orders that we book, but it turns out our manufacturers are having a little bit of a problem. So we're notifying you about what's going on and here are the things we can do to help you adjust uh, so that you're not going to suffer for, for lack of the material being there on time. Some, some niches like to have a, a summary report of all the special orders and back orders they've placed with us. Long story, not going to bother with it right now. Um, and then lastly, as we get brilliant at these things, we'd like to offer some target important customers or more, maybe more or all uh, an unconditional service guarantee, uh, or we'll give you money, uh, something to put value on it to make basic service brilliance in a sense visible, measurable, and putting a value on it. Because in theory, if we don't get it there, you've got the you've got downtime costs. We want to help offset those downtime co costs. And by the way, it always is there, so you don't have the downtime co downtime costs. That's why you should do business with us. Give us the lion's share, and then let's talk about getting married. So that's an overview of of service metrics that you would you would start to populate actually on 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 boundary two of the hexagon. Thank you.